Hello everyone. Welcome to F Sharp. Think functionally. A series of discussions on various topics related to F Sharp, right from the beginning issues to the real life applications. This is the very first video I am recording for F Sharp. Think functionally. You can find the coverage on the blog, which is here. You can find the GitHub, which is here. as well as for every discussion i'll i'll run you through the code what i'm thinking the approach that you should have and so on and so forth and the videos are of course on youtube for those of you who are already working on f sharp you don't need much of an explanation why you should use f sharp but for others who are in the world of application programming say in the dot net world with c sharp or in the java world or in the javascript world a big question always is why f sharp or why functional programming because it's drastically different so here i have put some thoughts on why why f sharp and why i personally got tired of imperative programming and object oriented programming uh, it's it's a long list of issues something which truly can't be discussed in a 5 minutes piece it's something that you realize over a very long period in a very slow manner but here i'll here i'll try to give you at least a short version of my issues with imperative and functional program and i mean the object oriented programming and what got me interested in functional programming and how i discovered more and more so when i say imperative programming i mean anything which is instructions based programming c nearly all of us learn c you know when we go to schools or colleges or have our first computer science courses and so on and so forth that's that's where we start to learn the imperative thought process how to how to break down programs and problems into instructions and loops and functions and how to pass data how to allocate memory in the world of c sharp and java you don't have to bother about memory allocation per se but at a very fundamental level nearly all imperative programming techniques share a common ground which is whole lot of instructions an instruction for everything from loop to jump to conditions to branching to what not one big issue that i faced over and over is that there is too much time spent on how to do something as opposed to what i need to do for example now that there are all sorts of collections available uh, in nearly every respectable technology in earlier days collections were a huge problem so how do you how do you build a dictionary how do you build an effective hash table how do you build a circular queue and so on and so forth moreover circular queue at a conceptual level may be one level of problem how do you realize it in the programming language of your choice that's another big issue so there's too much time which is spent on the nitty gritties the language issues for example if you are in c memory allocation effective memory allocation and deallocation is an issue in c++ or c sharp for for instance right nature of constructors deconstructors disposable and what not is an issue so there this is too much time which goes on and the how of the matter as opposed to what i need and then you have language integrity ceremonial code brackets semicolon keywords uh, languages are now full of keywords there's just awful amount of keywords everywhere and situational keywords and what not and java and c sharp are just full of you know decorators and attributes and what not so it's just too much time which goes on pointless details the details which are not business problems the business problems are rather straightforward another issue is that there is just too many foundational ideas especially in c sharp and java there are just too many foundational ideas from 
polymorphism to interfaces to abstract classes to infinite number of patterns and what not before you can actually work on a real life application you have to be well versed with lot of foundational ideas uh, and you must understand how to stitch those ideas together versus in functional programming Uh, there is only essentially one idea and that idea is transformations it sounds very odd if if you don't come from from functional programming background just transformations that the whole idea sounds odd rather unrealistic unbelievable but that's my intent uh, as we move forward uh, over many many discussions and videos and code samples you should be able to see what i saw some time back and i realized that there is a it's a completely different way of working in a functional language as opposed to an imperative or object oriented language mutability and null help which is another massive issue despite the fact that various techniques and tactics have been evolved over the years to handle these two there is no real good answer the the problems are way deep rooted they are not problems on the outer layers the problems are at right at the bottom layers mutability as well as the null and the, the amount of uh, ceremonial nonsense one has to deal with to handle these two issues is, is just appalling this is where functional programming approaches abstraction in a completely different way as opposed to object oriented programming if you talk to an object oriented programmer what is an what is abstraction and if you talk to a functional programmer what is abstraction they will in a philosophical way they will give you same answer but in realistic sense they will give you completely different answer if you are an object oriented programmer or even a you know c++ javascript c programmer mm-hmm. your understanding of and i had the same of abstraction is drastically different from what a functional programmer has and this is issue this is an issue of which solves which takes care of many 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 uh, real life application problems because every application has a domain or data modeling per se if you're working on a sales system it has its own data modeling domain modeling so java c sharp javascript etc they are not rich on domain modeling they are they're very poor end of the day you are dealing with strings integers floats etc and then you build your data model on top of it and all sorts of jugglery is involved in uh, bridging the gap between the the data types and uh, the data model algebraic data types which is the the term as used in functional languages is is a very convenient way of modeling data so we will address uh, data modeling as and when we we reach there what is my goal my goal is to help programmers a kick start get a fast track kick start so that they don't spend too much time looking for small details so that they can um, work with f sharp and over a long period as we build more and more examples as we cover more and more areas is to help programmers think functionally because that's where the key difference is not thinking in terms of objects not thinking in terms of classes not thinking in terms of imperative control flows but thinking functionally and to provide fast track learning material as opposed to so when i say fast track i mean you know material which is full of examples and real attack the problem kind of approach versus a book which is all about details and syntaxes and examples and what not and we will solve real world problems with essentially just two things which is functions and data and hopefully moving forward you will stop seeing these two as two you will see these two as one which is transformations but more on that later and eventually we should be able to do all of this which is build web apis which is a very common use case today and to build any sensible system we're talking about integration with databases cache layers queue layers and so on and so forth 
concurrency is, a, is, is another big issue in, in the modern world, how to write concurrent applications or how to write applications which are based on data processing. How do you process data? How do you build pipelines to process data? How do you, how do you run those pipelines concurrently, parallelly and so on and so forth. Another issue is it is very, very common for applications to have a very a significant portion of modern web applications or API applications or, or any kind of application today has a very thick business logic layer. A business logic is where what is needed from an application is programmed as opposed to the other arrangements which is validations, transformations, pipelines, etc. It's a very, very painful job. Writing the business logic in C-sharp and Java and JavaScript is a very painful job. So we'll discuss how functional programming and F-sharp simplifies it. Quickly, my approach is not, this. what I'm doing is not giving you an alternative for a book. A book is way more detailed, has way more coverage, on establishing the foundational ideas i'll rather spend i'll spend less time on basics i, I assume you can you always google and go to msdn and, and buy books to get your basics in place I, I i what i'll spend more time is doing discussions on what the problem statements are the all the the different ways to look at a problem the different answers that are there the the tools or techniques that will be used i'll of course uh, do i will discuss the 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 details to an extent but not to an extent that a book does a, a book is specialized for micro detailing and like i said i'll do a fast track coverage uh, what i'll do is i i'll, I'll uh, start a topic share my views share the code with you share my thoughts with you and the best will be when you do the exercises and samples and code runs yourself. I, I, I'll be more of a coach rather than a book for you. Uh, and before we give, begin, here's, a, here's more of a disclaimer. Uh, there are problems with F-Sharp. F-Sharp is not the perfect substitute to uh, object-oriented programming and or imperative programming. And here are the key issues that I personally either faced or or I are the reasons I dislike not dislike but you know I advocate when I have to raise issues against F sharp is that a you know functional programming and or F sharp is not too common which means that you don't find too many people to discuss these issues the blogs and the the stack exchanges are not full of F sharp threads so you will kind of find yourself alone oftentimes it's radically different from imperative and object oriented programming which means that there will be considerable time spent in 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 that thought shift because if, if you if you just learn f sharp uh, for f sharp and still use the imperative or object oriented way um, in my view it's time wasted it's it's not a it's not something you should really uh, you invest your time in if if you're not willing to think uh, functionally and th functional thinking is abstract thinking. It, it is high order thinking. Another common term which is prevalent is, is metaprogramming. Uh, I personally am not too fan of that word. But in, in a functional language, you deal at an abstract layer and you will understand it over a period of time. Another big issue is, is the lack of ecosystem. When I say ecosystem, I mean you know, anything from drivers for databases to, to third party libraries to, 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 to all sorts of good guides and videos and books and whatnot. One of the reasons I am doing this uh, whole exercise is, is the lack of ecosystem. The ecosystem is very, very thin. And my biggest complaint about F Sharp is the documentation, including MSDN. It's 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 barely it's barely documented. Some of the most complex uh, topics in F Sharp are barely covered in uh, over MSDN. Uh, they are just mentioned as if the reader is supposed to understand <coughs> everything magically. So quickly, my approach here here it is and you will get the blog which is here uh, i have already i have been already been doing this for nearly two weeks now so uh, 
there is some work already done so you can always go to blog for each article in the blog for each uh, you know edition in the blog there will be a, a, a video session quote which I'll, I'll i'll write as we as we move on I, i'll show you everything um and whatever i write i i commit it on github here don't bother about the the links i'll i'll put the, those in description and of course these videos so that's all for the introduction hopefully you'll stay connected good luck